Okay, here is an incomplete review of Unit D, Part 2. So another E equals E prime problem. Um, here we have a mass that's an Atwood's machine that's going to fall and hit the ground, and we want to know how fast is it going to be going when it hits the ground. And I might force you on, on the test to, to use energy and not Newton's laws. So I know that some of you, most of you, hopefully all of you can do this using Newton's laws, but let's... I'm going to force you to show me you can do this using energy. So how fast will it be moving? Well, um, E equals E prime. i got to change my lighting. My sh The shadow of my hand is in the wrong spot. So E equals E prime. Now it's important that you get all these energies. So let's see. The energy at the beginning is just the gravitational potential energy stored here. So it's 4 kilograms MGH. So 4 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared times h, 3 meters. That equals the energies afterwards. And so um, the energies afterwards are um, going to be, and this is where you have to, you have to be careful. Um, hey, why don't you pause this and see if you can get the energies afterwards. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, the energies afterwards are going to be, um, this will be at the ground, but this one will be up in the air. So um, let's do this. This is 40, this is 120 joules on this side. But the energies afterwards, are, you're going to have this guy up in the air. So that's M times G, so 1 kilogram times G times H. So I'm thinking that's 30, huh? 1 times G times H, yeah, 30 joules. Plus, um, both of these are going to be moving at the same speed because they're connected by the same rope. So one half, um, the, we can put the two masses together. They're going to be going the same speed anyway. So 5 kilograms times V squared. And so, um, yeah, they both have kinetic energy afterwards. So if I, this is going to give me 90 if I bring the 30 on the other side. And then um, 90, let's see, 90 times 2 is 180 divided by 5 is 36. So I'm getting a speed of 30, of um, excuse me, 6 meters per second. Is that what you got? 6 meters per second. Okay, next one. Hey, if I gave you... Uh, a function of V is equal to 3 meters per second cubed T squared and ask you for the position at 2 seconds. Would you be able to get that? Go ahead and try. Okay, um, nothing to do with work here, but it's a little bit of calculus. You have to take the antiderivative of this. So let's see, the antiderivative X is equal to um, T cubed and the units stay the same. You just The units shouldn't be a problem. You just leave those alone. See how that gives me, when I take the derivative, I get that. Now let's, um, plus C. Okay, but at T equals 0, we're told that X is equal to 0. So at T equals 0, X has to equal 0. So C is 0. Okay, so um, if I put in the number now, they want to know at 2 seconds. So it's 2 cubed is going to give me, see how the units work out to 8 meters? Yeah, the units work out to 8 meters. Okay, would you be able to tell me, the, for the next question, same same stuff, would you be able to tell me what the net force will be at 2 seconds? What would be the net force at 2 seconds? Go ahead and pause and try and find it. The net force at 2 seconds. Okay, so the net force at 2 seconds is um, M times A. And so that would be um, 1 kilogram. That's the mass of this guy. And A, I'm going to have to take the derivative of this now. So the derivative of, of V with respect to time is going to be 6 meters per second cubed times T. So at 2 seconds, I'm thinking that the, the net force is 12 newtons. So there you have it, the net force is 12 newtons. Okay, could you tell me how much work is being done by this force uh, from zero to from zero seconds to two seconds? How much work is done by this uh, 
how much work is being done by this force from zero to two seconds? Okay, see you in a little bit. Okay, now um, I hope that you didn't just multiply 12 newtons times 8 meters because um, it's not always 12 newtons. It's only 12 newtons at, the, the, at 2 seconds. Before that, it's less than 12 newtons. So you can't just multiply these together. But the way you do this is um, the net force, the work done by the net force is the change in kinetic energy. So the change in kinetic energy would be um, one half one kilogram times now at two seconds. Do you remember at two uh, at two seconds? I have to put in two for that. That'd be four. That that would be twelve meters per second. So I'll put in twelve meters per second minus uh, the kinetic energy at the beginning, since the velocity is zero at the beginning. Let's check and make sure. Sometimes it's not. If I put in zero there, yeah, that's zero. Yeah, so the velocity is zero. So it's going to be zero joules. Oh, forgot to square that. Okay, so that's going to be um, 144 divided by 2. So that would be 72 joules. That's how much work is done. Oh, one last thing. What if I asked you for this force? How much power was that force using at two seconds? How much power is this using? So the question is, how much power at two seconds? What's the instantaneous power at two seconds? Go ahead and try. Okay, well, the, fa the fastest way to do this is to say that the power at two seconds is um, force times velocity and so the force at two seconds um, is what do we say 12 newtons and the velocity at two seconds I think we said was 12 meters per second So the power is um, 144 newton meters over seconds. So that's 144 joules per second, which is 144 watts. All right, we got time for one more, I'm hoping. We have two minutes left. Okay, if you have a graph like this, a potential energy versus force, uh, excuse me, potential energy versus position. If I wanted to know um, what the force is at two meters, the force in the x direction at two meters, how would you get that? Go ahead and try. Okay, the force is actually the slope. So it's the, the slope of a u versus x graph. The negative slope is the force. So if I find rise over run, I can do this a number of ways, but let's say it's 20. I'll use this triangle. So it goes up 20 joules over 4 meters. So that's um, 5 joules per meter or 5 newtons. But be careful here. It's 5 newtons, but I'm going to put a negative here. Negative because the the um, to get the force, it's the negative du dx. See how that's the slope of a u versus x graph? Okay, if the total energy is 20 joules, the total energy is 20 joules, can the object ever reach the 6 meter position? Go ahead and think about that for a second. Can the object ever reach the 6 meter position if the total energy it has is 20 joules? Okay, the, the answer is no, because at 6 meters... It's got 30, it would need to have 30 joules of potential energy, and you're told that it's got only 20 joules of total energy, so it can't. Hey, what's the kinetic energy at 3 meters? What is the kinetic energy at 3 meters? Okay, at 3 meters, if you go up and over, you have 15 joules of potential energy. And since you have a total of 20, you have 5, 5 joules.